Okay, so let's take a look at these three uh, warm-up problems. Um, so in the previous lesson, we were practicing using cross products to solve proportions. Okay, so let's do the same thing here. So I'm gonna go X times 39, which is going to be 39 X. And then I'm gonna go 13 times 18, which I don't know what that is, so I'm just gonna do it here. 13 times 18. Eight times three is 24. Eight times one is eight plus two is 10. One times three is three. One times one is one. So I think I've got 234, okay, equals 234. Now, my next step in this is that I have to figure out what X is, so I'm going to divide both sides by 39. And what's gonna happen when I divide 39X by 39, 39 divided by 39 is just gonna be one. So I'm gonna have X equals, I don't know what it is, but I'm thinking it might be six. That's my guess right now. So let's see if that's really true. 39 times six. Uh, six times nine is 54. Six times three is 18 plus five is 23, I was right. And the reason I guessed six is because I was looking for some number that if I multiply by nine would give me four. Okay, so there's only, there's a limited number that that could be. Also, I noticed that 39 was close to 40. And so 40 times six would be 240. So that's how I, that's how I uh, estimated that it was gonna be six. Okay, so. Our answer is x equals 6. All right, let's take a look at the next one. We're going to go through the same process. Cross products. 6 times 30. So 6 times 30 is 180. And that's going to equal 25 times d. 25 times d is just 25d. Now, to figure out what D is, I'm going to divide both sides by 25. 25 D divided by 25, it's just, that's just gonna be a D. Uh, 180 goes into 25. I don't think it's gonna go in there evenly, because uh, I think the closest um, multiple of 25 is 175, so let me just kind of figure what this would be. 25 goes into 180. I said it's going to be about seven times. Seven times 25 is, I think that's 175. Okay. Subtract that. I can add a decimal and a zero. Bring down that zero. 25 goes into 50. 2 times, 2 times 25 is 50. So my answer is D is equal to 7.2. I didn't keep with the th same color theme. That's going to bug me. I better go back to my, go back to my pinks and greens here. All right, so let's look at the last one. Um... Don't get freaked out just because there's a decimal. You're going to go through the same process. 2.5 times 9. Well, I don't know what that is, so I can do 2.5 times 9. 9 times 5 is 45. 9 times 2 is 18, plus 4 is 22. I've got one decimal place there, so it's going to be 2.5 or 22.5. 
How did I know that the decimal place was gonna go there? Well, for one thing, I was trying to make sense of what the answer would be. This is about three. Three times nine would be 27, but I know it's gonna be less than 27 because 2.5 is less than three. So the only place that would make sense would be to put that decimal place there. And then my next cross product is gonna be six times H. And I get six H, back to the green. To figure out what H is, I'm gonna divide both sides by six. 6H divided by six is just H. I have no idea what uh, six, uh, 22.5 divided by six is, so I'm gonna just kind of solve it. Six goes into 22, three times. Three times six is 18. Uh, 22 minus 18 is four. I've got a decimal place there. I can bring down my five. Six goes into 45 seven times. Seven times six is 42. 45 minus 42 is three. I can add another zero, bring that down. Six goes into 30 five times. Five times six is 30. And I'm done. So I know that H equals 3.75, and there's my answer. How'd you do? Okay, let's do part two of lesson 1.6, solve proportional relationships. So we're basically going to extend our thinking on how to solve propor proportional relationships using a couple of um, you know, different methods, different strategies. So uh, here, let's work on example two on page 57. Okay. So example two on page 57 says, if the ratio of type O to non-type O donor, donors, donors, donors at a blood drive was 37 to 45. Well, this is kind of a new way of looking at it. So what we could say that is going on here is we have... 37 type O. And then we have 43 non type O. And so that way of marking it is the same thing as saying 37 over 43. Okay. So 37 type O donors, 43 non-type O donors, okay? All right, let me get my textbook ready. One more page, there we go. Okay, um, what we wanna find out is how many of these donors would be type O if we had four or 300 donors? So what we wanna find out is what's the total number of donors that we have so far, okay? We have 37 type O donors and 43 non-type O donors. So let's figure out what the total is. So 37 plus 43, I believe that's gonna be 80. So we have 80 total donors. All right, so that information is gonna be important as we set up um, this as a proportion, okay? So 37 of the 80 total donors were type O. What we wanna find out is how many people were type O if there were 300 donors. Now. This ought to look familiar. Because we have this set up as a proportion, we can go ahead and we can make cross products. So 37 times 300. Anybody figure that out? I believe it's 11,100. Okay. And that's gonna equal 80 T, because we had 80 times T. Now, 
in order for me to figure out what t is, because it's going to be 80 some times some number, I'm going to divide both sides by 80. 80t divided by 80 is just going to be t. Eleven thousand one hundred. So, if I do eleven thousand one hundred divided by eighty, that's going to be equal to plugging in my numbers in my calculator. One hundred and thirty-eight point seven five people. Now, because I can't have uh, 138.75 people, I can say, and I can change this to an about symbol, we have 139 people who would be type O. Now I want you to try page 57. Problem D. So you've had some time to work on problem D. So the ratio of 7th grade students to 8th grade students in a soccer league is 17 to 23. So I'm going to take that ratio, 17 to 23. These are my 7th graders. These are my 8th graders. Okay. Um, what I want to find out is if there were 200 students in all, how many of them are going to be seventh graders? Okay. So first thing I want to do is I want to figure out what the total students are based on this information. So 17 plus 23. So I have 40 students. Okay. So now I can set this up as a proportion. There were 17 seventh graders out of 40 students altogether. What I want to find out is how many um, seventh graders, and I'll use S for seventh graders, there would be if we had 200 students. Okay. So go through the process of, again of cross products. 17 times 200, I have no idea. Let's just figure it out. 0, 0, 14, 0, 0, 2. Looks like it's 3,400, okay? So 17 times 200 is 3,400, and that's going to be equal to 40 times S, which would be 40 S. Now, in order to figure out what S is, I need to divide both sides by 40. The right side is easy. 40 S divided by 40. 40 divided by 40 is just 1. So I'm going to just have S, and S is going to equal something. I don't know what it is, but let's figure it out. 40 goes into 3,400. I don't have a clue. Four, 40 goes into 3, 4, no, no, no. 340, okay. If I said 40 or 4 times 6, 4 times 6 would be 24, 4 times 40 times 6 would be 240. So I'm short. Uh, let me think about some other multiples of 4. Um, 4 times 8 is 32, so 40 times 8 should be 32, 30, 320. So let's go 8. 8 times 40 is 320. 340 minus 320 is 20. We bring down a 0. How many times does 40 go into 200? That's 5 times. 5 times 40 is 200. So, 
if there were 200 students all together, and this was our ratio of seventh to eighth graders, we would expect to have 85 seventh graders. In these next two examples, we're going to use unit rates to figure out what the relationship is between the quantities. Okay, so in example three on page 57, if you're following along in your books, uh, says Olivia bought six containers of yogurt for $7.68. Write an equation relating the cost, and we're gonna use C as our variable uh, for the cost, to the number of yogurts, and we're gonna use Y for our number of yogurts. The second part of this question uh, is asking for us to figure out how much Olivia would have to pay for 10 yogurts at this same rate, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of think about what am I looking for? I'm looking for the cost in dollars divided by the containers of yogurt. So if I start out with, this is the rate I'm looking for, it makes it easy for me to kind of start filling things in. All right. So here's what I know. I know that she spent $7.68 for six containers of yogurt. Okay. Now, if I were to simplify this, $7.68 divided by six, this is gonna give me my unit rate. Let's figure out what that is. So six goes into $7.68. Six goes into seven one time. Seven minus six is one. Bring down my six. Six goes into 16 two times. Two times six is 12. Space here. 16 minus 12 is 4. I'm going to see if I can lock my focus. Bring down my 4. 6 goes into, oops, sorry, that's bring down my 8. Sorry. 6 goes into 48. How many times? Oh, it goes in there 8 times. 8 times 6 is 48. And voila. I know that the unit rate is a dollar twenty-eight per one container. Okay. Now I can write this as a an equation relating the cost C to the number of yogurts using this information. Okay. So now I know that the cost of the yogurt equals the amount of one container, which is $1.28, times whatever the cost of the yogurt, or however many containers of yogurt I'm buying. So if I bought one container of yogurt, one times $1.28, my cost would be $1.28. If I bought two, Containers of yogurt would be one to one dollar and twenty eight times two, and I think that would be two fifty six two dollars and fifty six cents for my cost. So I want to find out based on this equation how much Olivia would pay if she was going to buy ten yogurts. So now I've got y is going to equal ten. And all I have to do is substitute 10 into my equation. So I'm going to have C equals 128 times 10. A dollar 28 times 10 is going to be $10.28. Sorry, that is incorrect. Anybody figured out my mistake? It should be 
and 80 cents. Okay, so that's the cost for 10 yogurts. In example five, we're going to do the same thing that we did in example three. Okay, we're going to figure out the unit rate. We're going to create an equation which includes, uh, looks like it's going to include costs and cost in gallons in this problem. Uh, and we'll be able to figure out uh, some more information um, about how much somebody paid for gas. So, in example four, it says JC bought eight gallons of gas for $31.12. So I just know that my cost is $31.12 for eight gallons, okay? What I wanna do is figure out what the unit price is for one gallon of gas. So this says 31.12 divided by eight. I'm gonna go eight goes into $31.12. Eight goes into 31, well, it almost goes in there four times. So three times eight is 24. 31 minus four is seven. Bring down the one. Eight goes into seven, uh, almost nine times. It looks like it's gonna go in there eight times. Eight times eight is 64. Um, 71 minus 64 is 7. Bring down the 2. Uh, it looks like 8 goes into 72. 9 times 9 times 8 is 72. Okay, so now I know that the unit rate for one gallon of gas is $3.89. Okay, and I can just write it as a unit rate. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to create an equation that I can relate the cost of the gas to the number of gallons of gas that I purchase. Okay. So the cost of the gas is just going to be C. My unit rate is $3.89. And then I'm going to multiply it by however many gallons I purchase. Okay. So, in the next part of the question, it says, how much would JC pay for 11 gallons of gas at this same rate? Okay. So, just like in the previous problem, I just need to substitute my value, my number, for whatever the gallons are. So, it's 3.89 times 11. Turns out... That equals $42.79. So the cost of 11 gallons of gas, if each gallon of gas was $3.89, would cost me $42.79. Now it's your turn. I want you to try problem E on page 58. So hopefully you've had some time to think about problem E on page 58. Uh, we know that Olivia typed two pages in 15 minutes. So I'm going to write that as two pages in 15 minutes. Now, like in the previous problems, I need to figure out what that is as a unit rate. So I'm going to go 2 divided by 15. Okay. Now, I know this is going to be a number that is less than one whole. So I look at the equation. That's not 2 over 15. That's not more than one whole. So 15 goes into 20 one time. 1 times 15 is 15. Uh, 20 minus 15 is 5. I can bring down a 0. 15 goes into 50, I think, three times. Three times 15 is 45. Oh, it looks like I've got a repeating decimal. Let's see. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. 
15 goes in there. All right, so what I could say is that she's re... Uh, Olivia is typing 0 0.3 repeating pages per one minute. So what I want to find out is how, min, how long is it going to take her to type 10 pages, okay? So my equation, I'm going to write an equation um, that's relating the number of minutes to the number of pages that she types, okay? So here's my minutes. I know that it's gonna take her 0 0.3 repeating minutes for every page that she types, okay? And so, I wanna find out how much time is it gonna take her to type 10 pages. If I do the calculations, it should be 3.3 .3 repeating pages per one minute, okay? So that's gonna be my time. So I actually don't wanna say 3.3 .3 pages per minute. I just wanna say it's gonna take her three, wait a second, is that right? Two pages in 15 minutes, 10 pages, this doesn't seem right. Oh, anybody see my mistake? I said it was 1.133, and then over here I've got, what? That is a little bit silly. Let's see if I can fix that somehow. I'm going to go to this page down here. Sorry about that. See? I make mistakes, and I don't even catch them. Not until it's too late. All right, let's try that again. Two pages in 15 minutes. Let's see. I see what there you've done. They're thinking of this as 15 minutes for two pages. Aha, now it's starting to make a little bit more sense to me. All right, so now if I do 15 divided by two, two goes into 15, seven, seven times two is 14, one, Two goes into 10, five times. All right, so now it takes 7.5 minutes to do one page. Ha ha, now I am getting somewhere. Okay, so now what I wanna find out is how many minutes it would take for any number of pages typed. Well, I know that she's going to type 10 pages. So 10 pages would be 7.5 times 10, which would be 75 minutes. Ah, oh, that's better. My previous answer just did not make any sense to me. So here's your homework or classwork. I would start in class if you've got time. Uh, page 58, number four. Page 59, numbers six and seven. Page 60, numbers nine and 10. Uh, make sure that you're not only <clears throat> showing an answer, but you're showing your work. Think about all of the things that I've done to show my work. Make sure you take a picture of the problems in your work, attach it to the assignment, turn in the assignment on Classroom, and then I'll score it and give you feedback.